Hey, guys. I'm David Wood, and I am just honored, actually, to be here uh, in the city and in the state. And uh, it took that young man to get me here, and obviously the Lord, and always listen to God. Because when God tells you to do something, you better do it. I got two things I want to tell you right off the bat. And you know the first part of the story is, does anything ever that's good come from Nazareth? And does anything ever good come from Hollywood? And I'm here to tell you that Hollywood is alive and God is doing things there that are just unbelievable. I'm originally from Canada. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind that because our hockey team usually kicks your hockey team's butt. Um, but I've been living in Los Angeles for about 30 years. I got discovered uh, as an actor model. I guess I was kind of cute when I was younger. And I got into the industry and moved to LA and I've been there ever since. Hollywood. And um, obviously the first 20 years of my life in Hollywood, I didn't know the Lord. So I was living a very heathen life. Uh, I also, I should explain something. Uh, I hope my bald head is not blinding any of you from the light. Uh, my agents got me up for a couple of gigs. Uh, they're making a remake of The King and I, and so I'm up for that role. And um, the uh, guy from Mr. Clean, uh, he's about to retire, so... Of course, I'm joking. So guys, here's the bad news. So this was my life for 20 years, uh, working for the wrong side. I was helping MTV do what it's been doing to the kids, brainwashing them. Uh, I've been helping organizations like Playboy, all the big movie studios. This is what I was doing for 20 years. I thought this was what I was supposed to do. I thought it was about making money, becoming famous, uh, private jets, limousines. This was my life for 20 years. Luckily, the Lord got a hold of me, and I had a Paul from Damascus experience um, when I was 38 years of age. I was living in Bel Air. It was a Friday night, drinking as usual. And the Lord came into the room and into my head and told me I was going to meet a woman who was going to bring me to the church and bring me to him. Well, I'm looking around, guys, because I don't know who God is. I don't know what's going on. Is this an alien invasion? What's going on here? So I kept drinking. It's Friday night. Kept drinking. Woke up the next day, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, hungover as usual. Same thought, presence in my head. The Lord, church, God, what's going on here? So I jump in my car. I drive down to the nearest church off of Wilshire. Go in. It's a Saturday, thinking something miraculous is going to happen. But it wasn't the right time. Three months later, I'm up in Canada visiting mom, and in walked this young Christian woman into the casting office. She wasn't sure why she was there. She was looking for a job. She sits down in front of me, tells me she's a Christian. So for the last three months, I've got this voice in my head. I'm thinking about God. Who do I talk to? I can't talk to any of my friends. What's going on here? She sits down, and for eight hours, we have the best conversation I've ever had. I had all these questions, she had all the answers. She finally gets up to leave, gives me a book, uh, C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity. I read that in a day. I give myself to Jesus, I go get water baptized the next day, and I don't come back to Hollywood for two and a half years. What I did is I put myself into a Bible college a week later. So I literally went, guys, from cocaine, limousines, private jets, the crazy life of Hollywood and a global world, to the Bible college, God, and the Word. And it's been the best 11 years of my life since then. The other great thing that happened was while this was all going on, there was a G8 event, which is when the eight nations of the world come together, and Canada was hosting the event that year. So just before I get saved, I'm helping my friend, the mayor, put on this G8 event. 3,000 media, press, Bush is flying in. It's chaos. But at the same time, there's this global prayer group coming together that are going to be praying and interceding and engaging this global gate, the G8. So I end up meeting one of the leaders at the mayor's prayer breakfast, get radically saved, and I end up helping not only the mayor put on the G8 event, but I help these wonderful men of God do this G8 prayer summit. And what was very special, and John was there, and that's when we first met, was there was these mighty men of God who all of a sudden kind of took me under the, their wing and started helping me. So I literally went from hanging around from the who's who of Hollywood and the financial system to kind of all these wonderfully godly global men.
And that's really been part of my success in such a short time is accountability, and I really strongly recommend that for everybody. So guys, I'm on a project now. Well, maybe I, let me go a little bit further. So I finished two and a half years of Bible college. I keep getting these prophetic words that I'm going to come back to Hollywood, that God's going to use all of this wisdom and all of these things that I did, unfortunately, learn from globally manipulating the planet for all the wrong people. And, and let me explain something real quick, guys. Hollywood is an infrastructure that can be used for good or for evil, but it depends on the person's heart. So there are some good people in Hollywood, and there is an infrastructure there that can be used for good. And if you look at what Mel Gibson did with The Passion of the Christ, it's a great example. If you look at what happened with Fireproof, a great example. All right? So that's how Hollywood kind of works. The second part of this you have to understand is Hollywood is just not movies. It's agents, William Morris ICM, who handle all the sports stars, who handle all the music stars. It's also the publicists that handle all the big media campaigns. It's also all the music labels. Every major media entertainment company is based in Hollywood. And that's why they have such global influence on the planet, television, internet, content. So really the key to this, I believe, is we've got to engage Hollywood. We've got to pray for the people, and that's part of what this journey is we're on. So guys, you all saw The Passion. We thought it was a great movie. Um, the Lord told me eight years ago that he wanted me to find a film that could be a catalyst to unite the church globally and bring uh, unity to the church. Well, of course, I'm looking at the Lord again going, you know, could you give me something a little easier? Uh, but obviously, this is what he's called me to do. So we came upon an idea after Mel's passion that the story really wasn't completely finished. And obviously, I love the Catholic Church, but, you know, Jesus is on the cross, pain and suffering, but there's really the real power of Christianity is that Jesus is alive today. So we came up with this idea of doing the second part of the story, which is the resurrection. And part of this whole concept is to be able to unite the church globally and then come out with a film that will actually talk about the real power of Jesus Christ. Now, obviously, we can't use the Hollywood system again because it's just such a dark place, and they don't really want to fund Christian or family faith films. They always steal all the money. All the investors that come to Hollywood always get stolen from. Um, so we have to figure out how are we going to do this. Now, eight years ago, when God was showing me this vision, I wasn't sure how this movie was going to get done. But now, because of the Internet and what we call streaming technology, our game plan is to release this movie globally on the same weekend to cell phones in Africa, laptops in China, churches in Australia, and driving everybody to a web platform where they will buy the movie directly from us. Obviously, two great reasons for this. All the financial money will then eventually get back to the investors properly. We can also use this money to bless the churches and denominations that get behind this. Um, and it also allows us to create a platform where if you think about Facebook, where over 10 years through the college campuses, they've gotten probably about a billion people up on a website now. Our strategy is driving hundreds of millions, if not a billion or two billion Christians to a website to watch a movie about the resurrection. Now, the other neat thing about this is God's bringing people to us. Now, I don't know if you guys recognize this. This is one of the characters from the movie Avatar. Did anybody see the movie Avatar? Okay. So, number one box office hit to date. Uh, billions of dollars. All 3D. We plan on making our movie in 3D. We're trying to reach generations and the kids that are on their cell phones that maybe need to see something supernatural and special. The head guy that helped James Cameron, who made the movie Titanic, and who made the movie Avatar, his right-hand guy is named Craig Tanner. And Craig and Gina are very strong Christians, and Craig oversaw for three years the team that did the 3D movie Avatar. Craig and Gina called me six months ago, and they have joined our team, and they're going to help us make the resurrection film in 3D. What's happening in Hollywood is God is dragging us and bonking us on the head and dragging us out of the system. You know, he dragged me out of there 10 years ago. He just dragged this wonderful couple out of there six months ago. They literally had to come out of Hollywood and move up into the mountains just to get away from the spiritual warfare and all of the chaos. 
So we now have the best 3D guy that's going to make our film, which is right there, the resurrection. Now think about this for a second. What else could unite a church that unfortunately sometimes is fighting about the silliest things? What else do we all have in common but the power of Jesus and that he is resurrected and alive today and we can have a relationship with him today? And what more does the world need to see is the love and hope of Jesus. So guys, our game plan is to make not only the most important movie of the Christian and Jewish faith, but really the most important movie, period. We are, I believe, in the end days, time's getting very short, and we want to use this film to not only unite the church, but encourage it, and use this film to reach a lost world and to hear the story of Jesus. So if that sounds good to you, I want all of you to stand up for a second, please. And I want you guys to stand with me, and I want you guys to promise me that at worst case scenario, that you will pray for this project, that you will pray for us. So I'm asking you to commit to that today. Also, I need about $65 million. So if anybody wants to pull out their checkbook, I'm joking. But please stand with us, and please encourage us to get this movie done. You know, Mel went through a lot of warfare getting the Passion of the Christ done. That's why he eventually spun out of control and burnt out. We've put together a team of us that are doing it. I'm just one of many that are stewarding this project. We need your help. We're in way over our heads, guys. But God is in control, and we need to make this happen, and I need your help.